Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surbhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 22nd of January. India's top court refuses stay on citizenship law, gives government four weeks to explain. Trump meets Pakistan PM in Davos, again offers help to solve Kashmir issue. And rescuers continue search for seven missing trekkers in Nepal avalanche. And now for all the details. India's top court on Wednesday granted the central government four weeks' time to file a reply on the petition regarding the new citizenship law, which is at the core of nationwide protest and indicated setting up a constitution bench to hear the pleas. The Supreme Court of India on Wednesday refused to put on hold the new citizenship law, the Citizenship Amendment Act, and gave the central government four weeks to respond to petitions on the law. The bench, headed by Chief Justice of India, S. A. Bobre, passed the order while hearing more than 140 petitions, mostly challenging newly amended citizenship law. The top court also restrained all high courts from hearing petitions on the new law before it decided on those pleas. The Supreme Court had given four weeks to the central government to respond on all 144 petitions. And on fifth of uh, uh, fifth week, there will be again hearing, and uh, there was a there was a prayer for staying of car. Supreme Court has said that at present uh, they won't pass any order for stay. The Supreme Court judges said that petitions linked to northeastern provinces of Assam and Tripura will be taken up separately, as the problem with CAA in these two states is different from rest of the country. के मामले में स्पेशली ये बात कही कि ये जो इश्यूज असम के हैं वो सेपरेटली सारी पेटिशंस एक जगह की जाएं और उसको सेपरेटली हियर किया जाए ऑफ कोर्स सारा बंच एक साथ चलेगा लेकिन वो पेटिशंस को एक साथ जो है वो वो सुना जाएगा मीनवाइल स्टूडेंट्स फ्रॉम द कॉटन यूनिवर्सिटी इन असम प्रोविंस टीच प्रोटेस्ट अगेंस्ट द सिटीजनशिप अमेंडमेंट एक्ट इन गुवाहाटी सिटी ऑन वेडनेसडे Protests have continued in parts of India, especially in Assam, against the Citizenship Amendment Act since December 11, when it was passed. People in Assam fear that it will primarily benefit the illegal Bengali Hindu migrants from Bangladesh, who have settled in large numbers across the region. The Citizenship Amendment Act, which is at the core of national-wide protest, paves way to Indian citizenship to non-Muslims who entered India before December 2014, after facing religious persecution in Muslim-majority Pakistan, Bangladesh and Afghanistan. U.S. President Donald Trump, who met Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan in Switzerland on Tuesday, said that the United States is closely following the developments between India and Pakistan over the Kashmir issue. He said the U.S. was prepared to help if necessary, but did not say how. U.S. President Donald Trump on Tuesday said the United States was watching developments between India and Pakistan over Kashmir very closely and was prepared to help if necessary, but did not say how. Speaking ahead of talks with Pakistan Prime Minister Imran Khan on the sidelines of the World Economic Forum in Davos, Trump said trade and borders were both critical points for discussion. While Khan said that for him Afghanistan was the top priority, and described Kashmir as a big issue. Doing more trade as it turns, and we're working together on some borders, and we're talking about Kashmir and uh, the relation to what's going on with Pakistan and India. And if we can help, we certainly will be helping. Uh, we've been watching that and following it very, very closely. Both of us are interested in uh, peace there and uh, uh, an orderly uh, transition in Afghanistan with the uh, uh, with talks with Taliban and the government. Uh, and also, of course, India, uh, it, is a, uh, it is a big issue for us. In Pakistan, it's a big issue. And, of course, we always uh, 
hope that the U.S. would play its part in uh, resolving it because no, no other country can. Bilateral ties between India and Pakistan have remained strained since the Indian government revoked Jammu and Kashmir's special status in August last year. It also bifurcated the province into two union territories. India has held a consistent position that Kashmir is a bilateral issue and it is not open to a third party intervention. Top US official Ellis Wells has renewed criticism of China-Pakistan economic corridor, urging Islamabad to rethink its involvement. She made the remarks during her official visit to Pakistan. U.S. Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asia, Alice Wells, has renewed criticism of China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, or CPEC, urging Islamabad to rethink its involvement with it. Wells, while speaking at a think tank event during a four-day visit to Islamabad on Tuesday, alleged that there is no transparency in CPEC projects and claimed Pakistan's debt burden is growing due to the Chinese financing, local media reported. While reiterating the allegations against CPEC, Wells said companies backlisted by the World Bank had got contracts in the CPEC. The senior U.S. official had earlier in November 2019 warned Pakistan of long-term economic damage if China keeps pursuing its giant infrastructure push. She had then said CPEC is not about aid since it is driven by non-concessionary loans with Chinese companies sending their own labor and material. The CPEC is a multi-billion dollar development project with a planned network of roads, railways and energy projects linking China with Gwadar port of Balochistan province, which is under Pakistan's occupation. Moving on, amid unprecedented inflation in Pakistan, where the middle class struggle to maintain their standard of living, the poor are finding it even hard to feed themselves. Residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir, which is already marginalized, are facing the burnt of inflation, making their normal life difficult. Amid unprecedented inflation in Pakistan, where the middle class struggles to maintain their standard of living, the poor are finding it even hard to feed themselves. Inflation due to massive debts, rampant corruption and inefficient policies by Pakistani establishment has also hit illegally occupied region of Pakistan administered Kashmir. Residents of Pakistan administered Kashmir who have been facing the brunt of inflation said that price of the commodity food items have subsequently skyrocketed adding to their ongoing woes. They accuse the establishment and Prime Minister Imran Khan of being apathetic towards their plight. They also complain that with the hike in petrol price Everything they use in day-to-day -day life has simultaneously been affected. Pakistan has been struggling with the balance of payment crisis and the burden of high public debt, which has led to an arrangement with the IMF and corresponding fiscal tightening. Scores of armed militants have been killed in Afghanistan this month as Afghan forces have spiked up fighting in the war torn country. In the latest showdown, the Afghan Defense Ministry on Wednesday said that security forces have killed 26 militants over the past 24 hours. 26 militants have been killed in Afghanistan over the past 24 hours as the National Defense and Security Forces conducted 12 joint offensive and pre-planned clearance operations and air forces carried out six air strikes, the Afghan Defense Ministry said on Wednesday. The ministry in a press release said 
The aim of the operations and airstrikes was to remove security threats, eliminate the enemy's strongholds and ensure better security in the country. The operations were conducted in 11 provinces across Afghanistan including Kandahar, Balkh, Helmand, Badakhshan and Lagman. This comes as talks are underway between US and Taliban negotiators in Doha to reach a peace deal. If an agreement is reached during Doha talks, the move could revive hopes for a long-term solution to the conflict in Afghanistan. Rescuers on Wednesday continued their search for seven trekkers who went missing after being swept away by an avalanche last week during a trek in the region of Mount Annapurna, the world's 10th highest mountain. Nepal Mountaineering Association has also deployed long-line rescue experts for the operation. Taking advantage of improved weather on Nepal's Mount Annapurna, rescuers on Wednesday continued their search for seven trekkers who went missing following avalanches last week. Four South Koreans and three Nepali guides have been missing since Friday after being swept away by an avalanche during a trek in the region of Mount Annapurna, the world's 10th highest mountain. Nepal Mountaineering Association on Wednesday deployed long-line rescue experts Dawa Finju Lama Bhote and Pimba Tenjing Lama, a senior tourism official said. The rescue teams using detectors have been rounding up around area where trackers are suspected to be buried under and have marked the areas where they have detected signs that could be related to the missing ones. After find out the um, certain places and the digging work also is very important for, for, uh, for this and uh, only the uh, search and identifying uh, is not uh, enough. Uh, that's why uh, after digging we can find something the, uh, something the, uh, in, the, the, in the identified place and uh, then this work also going on there. And uh, that's why it takes uh, some days, more days. Meanwhile, the operation could take few days to weeks as the avalanche has dumped up to 12 feet at the site of the disaster, 90 miles northwest of capital Kathmandu. Twins from across Sri Lanka attempted to break Taiwan's 1999 Guinness World Record for the largest gathering of twins earlier this week in capital Colombo. The attempt may have failed following an unexpectedly large turnout. A Sri Lankan attempt to set a world record for the largest gathering of twins may have failed earlier this week, following an unexpectedly large turnout. Thousands gathered to take part in the event held in an outdoor stadium in capital Colombo on Monday. But a bigger than expected crowd flocked to the stadium, causing long queues and meaning strict rules on registration were hindered. The previous record was set in Taiwan in 1999. The record then was 3,961 pairs of twins, 37 sets of triplets and 4 sets of quadruplets together in one place. Though organizers claimed they broke a world record on Monday but overcrowding could mean the attempt is invalid. However, excitement over participation was visible among people. <laughs> Non-profit organization Sri Lanka Twins aimed at helping underprivileged twins, triplets and quadruplets in the country, he said. The record attempt was followed by a concert performed exclusively by twins, including an 80-member orchestra. Meanwhile, arbitrators Guinness World Records did not respond to a request for comment on whether the record had been broken. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. India's top court refuses to stay on citizenship law, gives government four weeks to explain. Trump meets Pakistan PM in Davos, again offers help to resolve Kashmir issue. And rescuers continue search for seven missing trekkers in Nepal avalanche. Now viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night.